morning. It is, just so you know, Wednesday, April 15th. So, um, how y'all doing? Last night, I didn't sleep real well, but I got some caffeine in my gut and I'm ready to go. Um, I have to tell you, John says, and this is, I'm not trying to make light of the, uh, the virus 19, but now I'm into a Corona closet. That's what I've been, um, smacked with. And I, I have to tell you after doing, um, my office closet. And if you guys haven't seen that, uh, big cast, it was on Monday. You can go back and watch it in the archives. Um, I decided to tackle my hall closet and I decided it was, it's not a hall closet. It's a hall junk drawer, all right, of which I have to tackle that too. Before I show you again, the disclaimer I'm going to say is this. When you travel 225 days a year and you want to come home to a nice clean house, you just shove stuff in there and put on that hard hat when you open it. So um, I think my, I think this was the worst, but it was a real small space and I can't even Believe that I am showing you people this stuff, but here we go. Yikes. <laughs> now you can see it's a really, really, really small space. Um, amazing what a person could cram into all of these. Um, and so, so uh, it only took an hour, you guys. It only took an hour. Here we go. And yes, I do hand quilting videos there in the classrooms in, uh, on the quiltshow.com. So, and I think one of these days I'm going to do this, uh, hand quilting lesson on here too. I'm just trying to figure out this whole camera thing. All right. So here we go it before after ta-da I mean one of the things that I found were like 12 white pillowcases I mean good grief what do I need 12 white pillowcases um, and that doesn't even include the ones that are already on beds and most females have 10,000 pillows on their bed anyway so uh, I'm starting to look at things and I'm not doing the thing that that one cleaning person is as does this bring me joy no my question is now if I haven't touched it in a while um, does it bring me joy no it can bring somebody else joy let's just get rid of it so I told my daughter she owes me a thank you note and she's like for what and I'm like, for me getting this house in order, right? So then in getting ready for this and trying to figure out what to do today, um, I went over to one of my kind of file drawers. I started plowing through it and there were handouts there. I'll never be teaching using those handouts and stuff like that. So I'm going through and I did find what um, I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to work with little kids and make perhaps what will be a little heirloom for everybody. But before we do that, I want to talk about, now this is not the Burt Reynolds poster that I found. Uh, nothing will ever beat that. Um, but what I did find were um, my observations of driving across the country after 9-11 with my mom and dad in a Ford Ranger. Guys, a Ford Ranger pickup truck. Ford Rangers are the ones, they're, they're kind of the medium-sized trucks, not the big ones, not the ones that are all comfortable. It's the one with the two jump seats behind, okay? And so 9-11 uh, happened. We were in Door County, and I had to get home to host Quilting in the Garden. We had 10 days. And the last thing I wanted to do was get on an airplane. I mean, you guys all know. And so uh, my dad packed up the Ford Ranger, and we headed across the United States. Now, I am a very smart woman. I see those two jump seats back there, and I say, I'll drive. So um, I drove, and my dad sat in the front, and then my mom sat in the jump seat. My dad wanted to let my mom sit in the front, but we knew if we let my dad get into the jump seat, we would never get him out. But here, I found these notes. These are things that I learned from um, things I learned from the jump seat of a Red Ford Ranger pickup truck, traveling across the country 
with my parents. Um, I've done this many times as a kid, but I learned that many things such as sitting on a block of ice to stay cool is a poor substitute for air conditioning. How many of you remember that? Um, I'm pretty sure my dad was lying when he said his tires can't go over 70 miles an hour. They just seemed to be fine when he was sleeping at 80 or 90. Um, okay, I'm not saying that one. Okay, here's a good one. Our documented scientific experiment proved the amount of Advil you need to numb your ass is the exact amount. It's kind of like right when your ears start ringing. <laughs> so, um, the cocktail hour is not an optional social gathering, but a necessary survival mechanism. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, here we go. Now, my dad so badly wanted to stop in Nebraska to go to the Strategic Air Command Museum, which, which I was like, ah, I loved it, loved it. But I learned it's very important to take a head count, even if there are only three of you and that old men really do wander off. Uh, oh, um, uh, on the endless, on the endless flatlands of Nebraska, I learned that a golf ball has 500 dimples. I also discovered how many bottles of beer on a wall it takes to cross Wyoming. And at that moment, I also learned that everybody doesn't know how to sing. Also, did you know that Nevada is a two Advil state? Yep. But most importantly, I learned traveling in a jump seat of a Ford Ranger is, we're in a pretty great country. It's filled with terrific people and there's no place like home. And here we are now, 20 years later, there's no place like home. Um, I want to share with you that after 9-11, I lost my creativity for about six months. Um, I, I just couldn't sew. And yet there were people that this just fed their soul and they could do these fantastic pieces that actually ultimately ended up on display at Houston that year. Um, if you feel like you're losing your creative juju right now, don't worry about it. It'll come back. Uh, for myself, I'm having a real hard time sitting down at my sewing machine, real hard time creating. And actually, I've just come up with what I'm going to do, and I'll share that with you at the end, that it's just a matter of sitting down and sewing. Now, I did get some questions. Thank you so much. Um, this first one just kills me. It's from Ellen. She chat, chat, chat. Okay, from Ellen, uh, from Minnesota. Last week, I was talking with a friend who told me how she cleaned the, her iron sole plate. A couple uh, episodes ago, I showed how trashed my iron was, and you guys gave me tons of different ways to do. I ended up having to use steel wool and Ajax, which is just disgusting, but there she is, and you remember what it looked like. But next time it gets gunky, listen to this, okay. Um, what she does is she heated the iron as hot as it would go and rubbed the bottom with a Tylenol tablet until it melted enough to moisten the problem spots. Then she rubbed it on a piece of cloth or a paper towel and it came out as new. And she said she hadn't tried it yet, but this comes from the FWIW department. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to try it. I mean, I'll try anything. So thank you, Ellen. Um, and then, oh, the walking foot for my Bernina, not the walking foot, the free, the ruler foot. I don't know the number of it, but if you ask your Bernina dealer for the ruler foot, they can get it to you. It's not inexpensive. Okay. Um, and then somebody asked, I can understand losing some so mojo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I honestly think that that's one of the reasons we're making these masks because it's so mindless. You can just do it, touch your fabric, touch your machine, and know in your heart you're doing good things for other people. Uh, somebody told me the story, um, well no, remember in World War II, well I don't remember, but they had the ladies making bandages, right, out of sheets and whatever. Well, um, there was an old lady's home, this is recently, where all the ladies were on the front bench <laughs> making bandages. 
And I mean, the person said, you know, they aren't going to use it. And they, and the caregiver said, yeah, but you know what? They feel like they're doing something positive. So people, 20 years from now, will be in the old people's home making nose masks. That's what's going to happen. Um, okay, and then this one is somebody wanted to know about the Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. cutter. And I certainly thank you for asking so I can show her off, my baby. Um, this is a super heavy rotary cutter, okay? It's about eight ounces. You can use it left-handed. You can use it right-handed without changing the blade. The trick to using it is, this is the seat belt of it right here, and it's the lock mechanism. To open it, you just press in, touch, and you are completely open. I'm trying to figure out the camera. You are completely open and you can cut. To close it, you just roll it in your hand and go like that. Um, the blade change is really a kick in the pants. It's super easy. This here releases the blade. Okay. Put that down. Ooh, that's dirty. And then this is a magnet here. This just comes off. This pops back down. This slides in here and there. It, it is super, okay, here it's freezing now. I was afraid of that, there. It is because it's weighted, you're not cranking down like this and the position of the blade keeps your hand parallel. So for people with hand problems, and I didn't even realize this when we were designing this uh, rotary cutter, but people with hand problems are really loving it. It's taking a lot of the stress off their rotary cutting. So thank you for asking that, Yeah, yeah, That lets me um, promote something. Um, okay, so what I wanna talk about is a fun project you can do with your grandkids, with your kids, or by yourself, all right? So recently, when I was down in Southern California, I, taught my granddaughters how to stitch, all right? And what I did was I traced their hand and then she just did, Lev just did a running stitch. Um, she, at, I had her put her name in the middle of her hand and I also had her put seven so that we will remember that's how old she is when she made it. And it's really sweet because she fancies herself as an artist and um, in the middle of it she goes, I think I might like sewing more than art. And I was like, okay, that's okay, Lev, it all fits together. So um, what I wanna show you is a fun project that I did with her artwork. Well, actually I don't have it because she has it, but I can show you the gist of it. And then I'm gonna show you a really cool way to start embroidery, hand embroidery with no knots. It's called knotless embroidery. And I believe I'm going to have to go really slow here so that the camera doesn't get all herky-jerky, which is what happened the other day when I was working on the machine. So um, let me go down to the camera. And I gotta tell you something, I'm really proud of myself. I, I set all of this up without John. Okay, so I'm gonna be very slow. So here is a drawing that Lev did of her family two or three years ago. And I thought this would be so cute to embroider up. And ultimately it turned into a tooth fairy pillow for him. So the first thing I did was I traced on her simple drawing. Okay, so simple. And then when I do embroidery, I do like to use hoops. Let's talk about that. I do like the hoops with the screws more than the hoops with the springs because the spring ultimately gets in the way of wherever I am. And then the other thing is normally bigger is better, but I actually like the smallest hoop I can get my hands on. Um, uh, I peeled it off, let's see. This is four inches. This hoop is four inches, okay? And it's like just a craft hoop. It's got this screw thing up here and it's wood. This is five inches. And honestly, for my hands, I, it's too big. I like the small one better, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I just cannot believe the stuff I'm finding in my house. I just cannot believe it. But boy, I'm gonna have a clean house when it's all said and done. I got news for the world. 
Okay, so I've put this in here tight. I'm gonna start right here and go down. Now, what you do is here, here is my thread off of, it's just like a DMC six strand thread, okay? I was taught to take off two strands and sew with that. So what I would like to suggest is you cut, you're gonna work with one strand, okay? Cut it really, really long, probably like about, oh my goodness, this is almost 30 inches, you guys. And that's about right because I never wanna sew with more than 18 inches. It's gonna make sense in a moment, all right? So then I take one strand off, just one. Then I thread it, and I threaded this before because I, you know, well, you know why, because I didn't know if I could thread it. And one end is raw, the raw. Uh, wait a minute, I'm trying to get it so you can see this. The two raw tails. And then look down on the white. The other is a loop, all right? So what I have going on here is, actually this is good, the loop end is the long end, the cut end is the short end. Say it again, the loop is the long end, the cut is the short end. And so what I'm gonna do is, there we go, I'm gonna go down And, and then see how the loop is there, right? And then I'm gonna come up one thread of the cloth, one thread, make sure, yep, of the cloth, come back up, and then I'm going to go through the loop. Okay. and there you're ready to start. And you have no knots on the back. So then I'm going to stitch, and I'm a left-hander, and how I stitch is I hold the needle with my left hand, and I pull the thread away with my right hand. Thumb. And then I take a little stitch, Take a little stitch. And what I learned with straight line embroidery is this. You want, if you're doing this for competition, you want the back to look as good as the front. And ultimately, you don't even, I'm gonna let that settle there. Don't know if the camera can handle it. You can see there's little dots in there of, of, of fabric in between, but ultimately you want it the same as your front. All right, so let me take a couple more. And truly, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna work on today because I, I can sit and do this till the cows come home. Wow, I did take some caffeine and I'm a little shaky. Last night's the first night I could not go to, I just couldn't settle down. I don't know why. Um, and I am a sleep monger. I like to sleep at least 10 hours a night. Yep, that's true. Okay, so let's pretend my thread's almost all gone. How I'm gonna finish it off is this. I'm gonna go back down to the back side. All right, do we like how that looks? It's pretty good, okay. Then here we are in the back. And then I'm just going to weave through maybe three or four stitches. Working my way up the length. If you want, you can do a quilter's knot at the end. And this is how I do it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You come through, all right? Making sure the screen doesn't freeze like it did the other day. You wrap this around like a French knot, your needle, 
you pull through, and now you've got a knot. Last but not least, when you go to snip this, you might want to consider a pair of um, curved shield um, scissors or something with a blunt end because you do not want to have the horrible misfortune of going like that. That would just be the worst. So this I did by hand for my granddaughters and it's their tooth fairy pillow. And what I did was I put a little, um, just a little flange in. This flange was cut at one inch and then I ironed it and I did the bottom and then I did the top and then I did the sides, okay? Then to make a real super easy pillow, and you might wanna line this with something like fabric prep or something, I just took two hunks of fabric and I hemmed it on one side and then I hemmed it on the other side. Whoops, that's gotta go this way. And then I just stitched around and then I could turn it inside out with this opening. Now, a really smart person, a really smart person, would make the um, pillow the size of a pre-made pillow form, right? I probably ended up making the pillow myself an insert and just stuffing the stuff in it and all that kind of stuff. So let me, so, okay, um, that's down in LA. Oh, and then I put a little pocket on the back for them to put their little tooth in. Um, so on this side of town, that's in LA. I tried to get a picture this morning, but her mommy's at work, so I couldn't get it of it. It's really cute. Um, so Lennox and William, Lennox is five in pre-K. Here they have a really good thing in California. If your kid is born in the fall, you get a free extra year of kindergarten and they actually call it TK. So it's just really great for the kids because you know how the kids that are born in the fall often struggle. So um, she's TK and I know for a fact they about lose their teeth in first grade, right teachers? That's when they go and these big things come in. Um, so they are cat people. And these are not my designs, so I can't share them with you. I don't remember. Actually, they're from a pillow that I made from a kit. Let me grab it just a second. So look at all these crazy cats. It's the letters of the alphabet. Is that cute or what? So I made this. It says Tooth Fairy cute, right? And they are real, I mean, they are ridiculous cat lovers beyond measure. And so um, I decided, and they have three distinctive cats. They've got kind of a white one. I think it's kind of an exotic cat. I don't know. And then they've got Jenny, who's orange and white. And then they have Scout, that's a gray striped one. And so I drew this onto um, this cloth and I wanted it to be generic both boy and girl, and I use, I'll tell you what I used in a minute. Anyways, um, here it is. So here's Jenny, here's PETA, here's Scout. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like how this is looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna just do it out of real bright colors on an off-white cloth. And in the case of this, I traced on with a silver uh, marking pen, uh, silver varathin. This is Stanford. Um, there's Barrel. There's Rock. Those are you can get at art stores. And then there's Roxanne's that you can get in your quilt store and all that. If I'm if I'm working on say a white, I would consider the friction pin because I'm going to be stitching right on top of it. So I'm not going to worry about it about it showing through or anything like that. Um, and again, this is not for. This is my feeling about these Frixion pins. We all know that they were not created for fabric. Um, so I would never mark a quilt top with it or anything like that because it can create kind of a shadowing, like a whiting or something. Um, and so I only, I always say I only use it under the skirt where nobody can see what's going on. That's when I use these pins. And I love these pins, but I never use it the way I use other pencils and supplies that are made specifically for your fabrics. So that is what I am going to work on today. Um, 
Let's see. I know, aren't those cats just the cutest things? Um, I do love it when you guys send me questions um, and so I can answer them. Uh, I, if I can't understand it, I am not going to um, answer it, okay? I might even ask, reach back to you and say, what exactly do you mean? Okay, someone, uh, Cynthia is just saying she uses that for sewing a button on so you don't have a knot on the back. Cool, okay, super cool. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is we have a crazy little contest going right now. Let me see if I can find it. And it's based on me cleaning all this junk out of my life. Not, not junk, literary expressions of excellence. <laughs> Two people are going to win my little quilting ruler, my machine quilting ruler, and also one of those two magazines. And all you have to do is go to the front page of thequiltshow.com and fill it in. And if you, I think once you get in there, there's ways you can um, earn double points or triple points by sharing, by doing this, by doing that. I don't know, I didn't set it up. That was John's jam. Um, so, oh, the other thing is back to what I did today. The needles, I like to use embroidery needles and I like to use really fine ones. And um, I like one also though with an eye that I can see. I do use, you know, these things, these threaders, but um, if I start using a needle and it's too fat, because I've just acquired stuff. I mean, it could be for my mom's sewing box, okay? If it's too fat, it drags through the fabric, it goes bye-bye, just like that, bye-bye. Um, the other thing, is don't forget that Lilo is providing us with this really great PDF series called The um, Art of Quilting. It is not video, it is PDF, okay? And it comes out every Wednesday and every Sunday. If it were me, I'd grab a ream of paper and I would print this stuff out because it is college material that she is sharing with you. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? like this. I love that there are people here from all over. Um, and oh yeah, last but not least, if you're not a member of the quilt show um, and the programming that we have there, uh, we're charging $19.95 for a six month subscription. It's so funny because I would say before all of this pandemic happened, people were like, I don't want to watch it on my computer. I don't want to watch it. I don't want that. Well, guess what, people? We are all tied to our computers right now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's our mode of communication. And the shows are absolutely beautiful. Um, think of it as Netflix for quilters. Uh, we, behind the scenes, are scrambling on how we are going to be able to continue to provide you fresh content. Um, I don't want to exactly tell you what yet because we're still hammering out the details because who knows, right? But in the meantime, as we say goodbye, um, I really, really be kind to yourself. I mean, don't beat yourself up that you don't feel like being creative. And maybe that's why I'm cleaning my cupboards out because when you get done, there's a sense of satisfaction that is just amazing. My next thing I'm gonna clean, and I will not share, is either my junk drawer in the kitchen or my bathroom side three drawers that have all my beauty secrets in it. So, <laughs> you guys, thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. And on Friday, I'm gonna teach I don't know what. You'll just have to stay tuned or check my uh, Facebook tomorrow when I decide. The good news is in coming up with these classes, I'm just cleaning through stuff and learning stuff and going, whoa, I forgot about you, like what I learned going across the country after 9-11. <laughs> so we will never forget this. We are together as a, as a human race, I was going to say as a country, as a human race, we are together in this. And... Um, Stay safe, stay indoors, do what your governor tells you to do. So I will see you guys later. Have a good one.